You are listening to Rootbound, a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside. This special Mixed Greens episode of Rootbound is brought to you without fake commercial interruption. Really? I mean, if you want to pretend to pay for the show, you've got to run fake ads. Whatever. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rootbound. I'm your host, and my name is Steve. And Rootbound is the podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside. And each week, I invite a guest who joins me on the show to share with us about a plant that means something to them. And then I share with a guest about a plant that means something to me. And through this process, we can all learn more about plants and learn more about each other. But not today. Today is one of those special episodes called Mixed Greens. This is uh, Mixed Greens number four. And it's one of those episodes where we check back on some of the things we talked about in previous episodes. Little updates, little things here and there that maybe we missed, maybe I have learned since. It's a miscellaneous episode. Uh, so that's what's about today. And um, yeah, with that, let's let's just jump right in. I've got some fun things to share with you. And uh, spoiler alert, even though this is not the coffee episode, this Mixed Greens is a little bit uh, coffee heavy. You'll see. Uh, let's start with uh, some coffee. Well, not really. This song goes out to all the coffee lovers of the world. Well, listeners will remember back on episode 70 of the podcast, I spoke with Amy about the Kentucky coffee tree. And a little while after that, I uh, received a package in the mail from her contained what is described in her note as a Gymnocladus dioicus starter pack. That is the scientific name of the Kentucky coffee tree. And she sent me a few different kinds. She sent me a blonde roast, which she says is nutty and savory. Uh, this like slightly less roasted version of the nut. She sent me a dark roast, which is like Carib or Nescafe, she says, in question <laughs> with a question mark by it. And uh, these are ones that you can either eat or you can uh, grind to make coffee. But she also sent me unroasted Kentucky coffee tree uh, seeds. And then I'm going to read from her uh, a little note here about how to roast them, because that's what we're going to do in this little segment of the show, is roast some Kentucky coffee tree seeds. So she says, unroasted in the shell, a basic guideline is 350 for 20 minutes. Let's set the oven to 350. Preheat. And there we go, 350. And then remember to put something heavy over them, upturned casserole dish or cast iron pan, etc. Some seeds will explode with a loud bang. So record the roasting process. I plan on doing that. They sound like popcorn, but scale up the sound with the seed size. When the first three to four pops, turn off the oven and keep the Kentucky coffee tree seeds in the oven until it cools completely. More seeds will pop while they're cooling, so keep that lid in place. At this point, sorry, there's some nut cracking to be done, and it's slow going. I find they crack best with force applied to the broadest plane of the seed, usually cleanly in half, but the roast has a lot of variation. Some seeds will require more or less force, and it's not always easy to gauge. You'll probably shatter a few. <laughs> a, uh, a single roasted batch will produce beans with a wide range of shades, so you may want to re-roast some shelled beans for more consistent color. So yeah, that is the note from Amy. So yeah, I have a bag here of Kentucky coffee tree seeds, and let's see what we got here. It is, we got about 500 grams. Um, of seeds and let's uh, let's get this going. I'm gonna get about out a big tray here, and I'm gonna get my heaviest cast iron pot thing. That'll be perfect. All right, I'm gonna put these Kentucky coffee seeds into this big cast iron Dutch oven in the bottom, and uh, yeah, they really sound like like rocks, <laughs> quite hard. Um, and then we will pop them in the oven. And then hopefully we'll get some exciting sounds here. So, all right, we've got, I've got, let me put a few more in here. We've got the bottom of this cast iron pan filled with Kentucky coffee tree seeds. Cast iron lid on. And when the oven is preheated, I'll pop them in there and we'll, uh, we'll check back and see how it's going. So 
So one of the things I thought I might start doing in these Mixed Screens episodes is going back to some of the interesting little pieces of audio tape that I put in between the segments of the show. You know, you've heard some stuff like that throughout. It's one of my favorite things to do with the show is find little weird bits of audio that are relevant to the plants we're speaking about. But I thought it'd be fun to uh, kind of maybe go back and dive a little deeper into some of those little pieces of audio tape. And you'll remember, actually, if you listen to the very first episode, uh, I played some clips from this. Let's just hear it for a second. It's a green world we live in, and lucky we are that it is. Yet how few of us realize the significance of the plants which make it green. In this color of nature, symbol of youth and growth, the green plants from lowly grass to lofty trees hold the key to life on Earth. So that was a little clip from a documentary called The Gift of Green. Um, I found that on archive.org. Archive.org is really great. Most people use it for looking up old versions of websites. It's got tons of other really cool archival stuff on it. And it's one of my first go-tos when trying to find weird audio to play on the podcast. And The Gift of Green is an interesting documentary. It's one of those things where I just pulled it and put it in the show because it just had great uh, dialogue about plants. But I didn't really give it much more thought until just recently. And uh, I started looking into the film, and a lot of interesting things popped out to me. So let me just share with you the things I learned about this film and the things I learned because I learned about this film. So first of all, this film, The Gift of Green, was directed by a guy named David Flaherty, and his brother was a guy named Robert Flaherty, which uh, he is noted to being the first person to have a commercially successful documentary film. What's wild about that is that I went to film school, I make documentaries, so like, that's one of my normal, <laughs> it's like my day job, and uh, and I had never heard of this guy, Robert Flaherty. When I heard about the film that was the first commercially successful documentary film, I realized I had heard about that film before, but I, I still didn't know much about it. But that film was called Nanook of the North, and as you can imagine, a, a film being made by a uh, white guy <laughs> in the 1920s, about uh, indigenous people. It, it definitely has its problems, but it was the first commercially successful uh, documentary film. You can look up the Wikipedia about that. Pretty fascinating stuff. He also made a uh, film, a similar kind of film called called Moana, which I assume maybe the Disney film is at least the name is inspired by that. Not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, he was, he was a famous documentary filmmaker uh, uh, in the 20s and on, and his brother David helped him with the production company and also directed this film, The Gift of Green. I also learned about someone named Helen Van Dongen, who was one of Robert Flaherty's editors, and she also edited this film, The Gift of Green, and she seems like she was super cool, early film editor, just a really impressive uh, biography and CV, and I'm definitely checking out some of her films. I'll be putting those links in the show notes as well. Now, the the last thing I learned about this film, The Gift of Green, is that it's essentially... uh, propaganda for the sugar industry which i'll give david flatterty credit like it is a mostly just factual documentary it's not to the very end where there's like this shining sugar crystal and 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 stuff you know exalting the fact that you know sugar is the uh, beginning and ending of life which i guess in some ways is true but it's, it's more complicated than that but it was produced by the sugar research foundation that's who paid for the film and the sugar research foundation later became just the sugar association and this is an interesting and controversial organization uh that has been you know pushing sugar on uh, on america's for a long time in fact there was something very controversial in 2016 when it was discovered that uh the former uh executive of the organization had commissioned some very famous studies so he paid for these uh he, he paid for these studies that basically showed that sugar was great and not a problem. <laughs> and so anyway, that's who produced this film, The Gift of Green. Though, like I said, if you watch it, it's mostly just a very factual documentary, and it talks about the gift of green, which is very true. Plants are a gift, and I think uh, that's a cool thing. So anyway, it, learning about this film took me down a lot of rabbit holes. I learned a lot. I thought I would share that with you. And uh, yeah, that is a bit of The Gift of Green, which I've used uh, as a little audio tape in a few episodes, actually. The beauty of this green world we take for granted. The pine trees of northern woods. The wind-shaped cypresses. The giant forests of snow-clad western slopes. the bright, lush growth of warmer places, palms of tropic lands, in kind and number endless. 
trees to give beauty, trees to bear fruit, trees to shelter and shade. How much we owe to the trees, to all green plants, large and small. Oh, there it was, there was one for sure. Okay, that's one. We're supposed to stop the oven after about four of those. It was not, not as loud as I expected. Let's maybe get this other microphone in a little bit higher position so we can put this microphone in a little. Oh, there's another one. That's two. That's three. That's four. All right, now we're gonna turn the oven off. And, all right, turn it off. And now we just let it go until it's completely cool. I guess it's gonna keep popping. Um, and we'll check back in <laughs> uh, a little bit later when it's done. Wow. Pop goes the weasel. Back on episode 73 of the podcast, you'll remember that I talked with Audrey about cucumbers and, and we talked about pickling. And at the beginning of that show, I talked about the word pickle. And uh, I got myself into a bit of a um, grammatical pickle, or at least um, uh, maybe a puzzle. I, I noted that the word pickle is a very interesting word because it is a verb, but when you perform that verb on something, that thing becomes the same word, the noun version. So, you know, when you pickle a cucumber, it becomes a pickle. Pickle something to become a pickle. And I question, is there any other word that behaves that way, where you take the verb, the exact verb, to pickle, and then the thing that you do that verb to becomes that word. And I couldn't think of anything. I racked my brain, and then I brought it up in the podcast, and then immediately Audrey from the same episode came back with the word roast. When you roast a piece of meat, it becomes a roast. So that's pretty good. And that made me think of, oh, what about toast? You toast a piece of bread, it becomes toast. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. And then, yeah, Amy, also from the uh, Kentucky Coffee Tree episode, came back and said preserve. When you preserve something, it becomes preserves. And that's not quite perfect because there's an S at the end. It's not preserve, it becomes a preserve. Or maybe it can become a preserve. Anyway, notable that those are all cooking processes. So that's pretty interesting. I don't know what that means for the English language. Uh, if you have any uh, thoughts, send me an email, uh, rootboundpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, or, you know, if you're Will Shorts or the Grammar Girl, <laughs> send me a message. <laughs> I'd love to talk about it. It's an interesting little quirk about lang uh, it's an interesting little quirk about English uh, that I thought I would share with you all there. So yeah, pickle, roast, toast, preserve, all have that grammatical function, apparently. I'm a man of few words, but those words will count, and so will my actions. The roasted Kentucky coffee seeds are completely cool now. In fact, it's the next day. I let them just cool overnight. I left them in the oven with it off. So let's crack open this uh, big uh, cast iron Dutch oven and see what we got here. And <laughs> wow, it's like, it's like shrapnel in here. Some of these just exploded so much. Holy cow. It's, it's like already almost like pre-ground. You know, Amy said in her message that I really have to spend a lot of time cracking these, but it seems like a good chunk of these just like cracked themselves. So I think I'm just gonna like try to scoop out the, the stuff that's already cracked here and make a cup out of this and then I'll crack the other ones later, um, which apparently takes a lot of time. There's a, there are a fair number in here that aren't cracked, but I think there's enough here to make a cup of Kentucky coffee tree coffee. So I'm gonna separate all this um, ground stuff put it in a blender, and I'll come back when the drink is going. So yeah, that's uh, gonna be very exciting to try this. Okay, so about 10 minutes has passed since uh, you last heard me talk here, and I have now just, um, per instructions from Amy, I have uh, boiled the ground Kentucky coffee tree grounds in water for about 10 minutes, and it's gonna be serve, serving this like old school stove top coffee style. So I'm just gonna uh, strain it as I pour it and then maybe let the ground settle a little bit and then we'll taste it. Um, it looks it looks kind of like coffee. It's very, you know, it's a dark brown liquid. Uh, let's pour it here. 
filter out some of the biggest grains. It's gonna probably still have a lot of grounds in the bottom, but let's see here, all right. You know, it's because because he did it this way, it looks a little bit more like a, a French press or maybe even more more cloudy than coffee. But you know, maybe if I were to do it through a coffee filter, it would look different. I'll take a picture of this real quick, just for, for uh, posterity. Yeah, it looks like coffee. It doesn't, you know, the smell is not coffee, but you know, this is what I have to remember. This is not coffee. It is Kentucky coffee tree, Gymnocladus dioecus. Um, it may have some similarities with coffee, but okay. So I'm going to take my first sip here and we'll see how it tastes. So very hot right off the stove. Mm. Hmm. It's smoother than I'd imagine. I imagine it to like with the way that it looks and smells that it would be like really like super dark roasted coffee, but it's actually a bit smoother than I expected, but it does have a roasty flavor. I need to get better at describing flavors if I'm gonna keep tasting things in this podcast. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think this definitely will scratch that itch if you need like a, a warm roasty beverage on a on a cool morning. Um, if you don't have access to coffee, I think it would actually do the trick. Um, of course, it doesn't have any caffeine, but you know, a lot of those coffee substitutes are like that. They don't actually have any caffeine, but they they give you that feeling of drinking coffee. And, it, and as Amy said in the episode, if you go back and listen to the episode of a Kentucky coffee tree, uh, she mentioned that it might have some like stimulant effect. It's not well studied, but most people who drink a lot of coffee, you know, that stimulant effect is way stronger. So I probably won't experience any of that. But yeah, pretty good. I think what I'm gonna try now, even though I, I normally drink my coffee black, I'm gonna try adding a little bit of um, sugar. And in this case, it's it's some crushed up caramelized honey. When I was extracting honey yesterday from my bees, I, I had a, a thin layer of honey on a piece of parchment after I did the extraction process. And then I put them in the oven and I you know, turned it into uh, caramelized, like hard crack honey. Uh, and I'm gonna add a little bit of that I'm gonna add a little bit of that honey to, I'm gonna add a little bit of that uh, caramelized honey to this, because I think that would add a nice flavor. So let's try that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, this is good. I'm trying to think of what I could compare it to, but like I said, I'm at a last for words. I need to get better at uh, describing this stuff. Okay, here we go. Add a little bit of this. Hear that? That's like little thin pieces of hard caramelized honey. Let's put that in here, give it a stir, which I'm gonna stir up all the grounds that are left in here too, but that's okay. And let's just give the sweetened version a taste. We'll take a little bit for this sugar to dissolve because it's, you know, in bigger pieces than uh, crystallized sugar, but that should do. Very, very pleasant. I enjoy this. I'm gonna try this again, add this to my repertoire of, uh, of hot beverages. So thanks to Amy for sending me these Kentucky coffee tree seeds. I'm also gonna try the other way she uh, recommended preparing it. But yeah, that's it. A nice roasty beverage uh, for the afternoon or any time. Um, and speaking of roasty, let's, uh, let's talk about the original roasted beverage coffee. Uh, got another segment about coffee itself coming up right now. It tastes like soot and hot water. I'm hooked. <laughs> As I said at the top of the show, this is not the coffee episode, but we are going to hear a little bit about coffee now. And I think uh, what you're going to hear is a great example of how, um, how plants can connect to us, uh, even through generations. And uh, yeah, basically what you're going to hear is two phone calls kind of interweaved, uh, one with my dad and one with his mom, my grandma. And um, it is about coffee, but it's about a specific brand of coffee. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's just interesting to think how this, like, uh, roasted bean from another part of the world can kind of, like, draw thread uh, through time. Yeah, let's just hear it. Hey, bud, bro, hang on a minute. Okay. You there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm walking and I tried to get pick up my earbud. I'm listening to the news. What's going on, son? How um, are you doing? 
Pretty good. I just wanted to wonder if you was okay if I record a conversation with you to ask you a question for my plant podcast. Yeah, but I don't know if right now is a good time. I'm like walking in the hundred degree heat. I mean, uh, I mean, if you don't mind talking in the hundred degree heat, it's okay. Let me uh, pull over here in the shade. Okay. Uh, do I give any kind of heads up? Is this all, all you, you, impromptu? Yeah, totally. Okay. Um, I, I just want you to tell me about Seaport Coffee. Hey, well, I don't know that much about Seaport Coffee except for that's what the uh, the kin folk that kind of came from Louisiana and deep east South Texas, that's what they drank. My, my watch started going off, the phone going off, and I was talking to a friend that had moved to Austin. You know, one of our old... Anyway, I was going... Told Grandpa, I said, get the phone, get the phone. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I have to, like, yeah. Um, I, I was calling because I wanted to ask you a question that I could use, if, and if, if you would let me record it for my plant podcast. Oh, okay. Well, if I can answer it, I, think, I can't answer too much these days. You will be able to answer it. Ba- basically, I want to, to you to tell me about Seaport Coffee. Oh, well, I, I, the only thing I know is that it was strong as I'll get out. Uh, it was... Um, what I grew up with. So I grew up drinking sugar and milk and everything else because that's what mother and daddy had drank all along. And um, I, I'm not sure where it's made, but it, it was very plentiful in Port Arthur, you know, back when we were drinking it. It was like Port Arthur coffee. It's just what they drank. And that was um, my first cup of coffee was on the John boat with Papa, you know, my grandpa from a thermos in a plastic cup and and I mean he didn't say it was seaport but that's what they drank so I'm pretty sure it was seaport and uh, that's really all I know about it how did how did it taste just tasted well it just tasted like coffee my first cup of coffee it was uh, I don't know it was kind of kind of tangy give me a little pick me up <laughs> it was you know it was. I just thought it was cool. Papa slipped me a little cup of hot coffee, and uh, while we were fishing, and it kind of became tradition after that. When I started drinking it, you know, when I was when I was young, it was too strong then. That's why I had cream and sugar and everything. And uh, I haven't looked for it in years. I don't. I don't want any of it. It's just <laughs> too darn strong for me. Yeah. <laughs> you remember Mark? Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he would talk about that seaport, how nasty he thought it was, <laughs> and and uh, and that. And it, I remember one time him talking about him talking about that's probably that old seaport coffee, and it and it rang a bell. I was like seaport. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, in- interesting. So yeah, you sent me that bag of seaport, and I can confirm that it is. It, I don't. Well, I don't want to give it the the word nasty, but it's not. It's definitely not for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's not connoisseur coffee, and and God only very knows dark how roast. That stuff was roasted. Um, yeah, I yeah. was I was reading about it recently because I was because like, well, Dad sent me a bag of it. I had never had it before. I, I can confirm it is still very strong. Um, oh, but you can. But um, I, I was reading about it. it. The company I think was founded. I think it was founded in Beaumont. I think. Um, it, it, it probably was. Papa was born. And raised in the Beaumont Port Arthur area. Yeah, so that that makes sense. And I guess that, yeah, they're still making coffee, and it's like a, over a hundred year old company. It was in nineteen twenty one, I think they were founded. Really? Yeah. Well, I you know, and I, and I don't know, but if uh, Papa ever slipped you a cup of coffee, it might have been Seaport. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I you know, I also had my first cup of coffee on on probably that same. Was it the same boat? It was Papa's boat. That little, that little flat bottom boat, yeah. John boat that he gave me. Yeah, it was probably the same boat. But it probably wasn't. I guess it wasn't Seaport that you made. No, it, it wasn't Seaport. It was. It was probably so that would have been in Farmer's Branch. It was probably just uh, some kind of soldiers or something. But yeah, that's interesting too. I didn't think about that. But yeah, it was the same. It was the same boat. Yeah. And and in Port Arthur, there was always a pot of coffee on the stove. Oh yeah. 
Just like, oh, just yeah. always. Yeah, I mean, any time of the day or night, anybody came by, you want some coffee? You know, they may have just turned it off, but they can turn it right back on. I see. So you just like reheat it you when whenever needed. Oh, oh yeah, just yeah, just turn the fire on back under it and <laughs> shovel it into a cup. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll, thanks for answering all my coffee-related questions. I'll let you get out of the heat. Well, I'm in the shade shed right now, so, uh, yeah, not a problem. If you think of anything else or if I think of anything else, I'll uh, I'll text you or shoot it to you. I'm just okay. getting started. I'm just like a mile into it, so it's hotter than hot. So thanks for thanks for giving me a little break. Bro. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'm going to use this recording in the, in the podcast in, in some part. Okay, you guys send me a link to it. Okay, okay will do. Well, thank you for answering my weird coffee questions. Okay, always happy to. Okay. <laughs> All right, love you, sweetheart. Love you, too. Bye. This special Mixed Greens episode of Rootbound featured a phone call with my dad and my grandma. Also, special thanks to Amy Anderson for the Kentucky Coffee Tree Seeds. And we also heard a little bit of The Gift of Green, the documentary directed by David Flaherty. If you like Rootbound and you want to help the show keep going, you can learn all the ways you can support the show at rootboundpodcast.com slash support, including supporting the show on Patreon. Rootbound is hosted by black coffee drinker Steve Ellington. Music by Christian Kriegeskota. Fake ads by David Lonnie. Rootbound is a podcast about plants for when you're stuck inside, but if you can go outside, take a moment to notice that it is a green world that we live in, and lucky we are that it is. This fake ad-free show better not affect my fake paycheck.